Okay, we're still in our L11 start document, and what we'd like to do is take the art we've created for the top of the can and map it onto a three-dimensional cylinder. But before we can do that, we have to convert the art into a symbol. So let's go ahead with our black arrow selection tool and click and drag around the art in order to select it, and we'll go to the object menu to group. Now open the symbols panel, and to convert this art to a symbol, we just click it and drag it into the symbols panel. And let's give it a name of can lid, and let's make it a graphic type of symbol. So now that it's in the symbols panel, we can map it onto a three-dimensional shape. Um, and we can also delete the art off the scratch board. So let's do that, and go into the effect menu and look at our 3D options. We've got extrude and bevel, revolve, and rotate. Now two-dimensional objects have two axes. Uh, the X is horizontal, and the Y is vertical. Three-dimensional objects have a third called the z-axis, which is depth. So extrude and bevel adds depth. For example, a circle can become a cylinder. And revolve sweeps a path around the y-axis. For example, a semicircle can become a round sphere. And rotate uses the z-axis to rotate two-dimensional artwork in three-dimensional space. For example, you can take a line of type and rotate it so that the perspective changes, so that maybe the type could be placed on a street sign or something like that. I'm going to click on the word effect again up here to close the effect menu. OK, let's make a shape and then apply the 3D effect to the shape. So let's get the ellipse tool, and we'll click once with the ellipse tool, and let's make a circle that is 3.9 inches, 3.96 inches by 3.96 inches, and then click OK. And I'll hit the letter X until my fill indicator is to the front, and then come over to the swatches panel and fill that shape with the can green shape, and then hit the letter X until my stroke indicator is in the front, and then hit the forward slash key, which is a shortcut to none. So I, now I have no stroke, and I have that green fill on the shape. So I'm going to go ahead and move my artboard to the left a bit, and go into the effect menu to 3D, and let's choose extrude and bevel. Now we've got the Extrude and Bevel dialog box, and we'll click on More Options. And because the circle was selected, when we check Preview, we see that the shape is being changed into something that looks three-dimensional. And if we click on the little cube here, we can change the orientation in space, and so that the cylinder, the three-dimensional cylinder, moves around in space. But let's try a um, preset position. We'll go into the Position button to Preset, uh, off-axis bottom. So let's choose that one. That's how our cylinder looks now. And um, we can go ahead and change the depth, the extrude depth down here from 50 point to 75. And now we see that the depth of the can has changed. And we can choose a closed cap or open uh, cylinder. So if we choose open here, we get the hollow appearance and then we'll go back and choose solid because we want it to look like a solid can. Now we can also apply different bevels um, from the presets here and we can preview the different kinds of bevels. But let's go ahead and just keep it no bevel, so we'll click none. And now we can um, leave the shading the way it is, plastic shading. This looks mostly, uh, looks more realistic usually to choose plastic shading. We can uh, uh, change various things about the lighting, uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave the lighting the way it is right now. And we're going to go to where it says Map Art. We'll click on the Map Art button, and we get the Map Art dialog box. Now, we can see that we've got three surfaces here on our cylinder, and we can click through them and we can see we've got the top and the bottom of the cylinder, and we've got the side of the cylinder. And we can map art to any of those uh, three surfaces. But we're going to go ahead and choose surface one, and look over here at our symbols. So in our symbols panel, we do have the can lid, and we can choose that and map that artwork onto the top of the can. So we'll choose that one. There, it took a minute to uh, render, and now we've got the art applied to the top of the symbol, to the top of the cylinder. 
and we can just click scale to fit down here in the bottom lower left in order to make sure the art is fitting on the top of the cylinder okay and usually um, I do check shade artwork because it's a bit more realistic to give it a shadow uh, some shading again it's taking a minute to render and there we go now we've got some shading on the top of the can uh, so it looks a little bit more realistic and I'm going to go ahead and just click OK and then I'll click OK here and we'll look at the artwork on our scratch board here and we see that we've got the art for the top of the can mapped onto a three-dimensional cylinder. Now anytime we want to change it we can go back up here to the appearance panel and there it is the effect is up there we can go ahead and click on the effect and we get our dialog box again and I'm just going to check preview and then takes a second to render there we go and I can rotate the cube a little bit in space in order, in order to change how it looks and we'll allow it to render these 3D options are very memory intensive there we go and now it's rendered we'll go ahead and click OK and we've modified the three-dimensional object by using the appearance panel